This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today, in the arena, we're exploring another deck that has popped up in the Manta. It's here and there. It's doing well in some tournaments, and it, you will see it on ladder occasionally. So at the very least, we need to know how it works, and who knows, it might be the deck for you. Yes, indeed. It runs adventure cards. Uh, this is Luca Coma Adventure. So, you know these cards. Edgewall Innkeeper, Brazen Borrower, Bone Crusher Giant, Love Struck Beast. This core in the teamer color combination of red, green, and blue is going to make up some competitive deck until they rotate out of standard because it's so good. It's always going to be the best mid-range shell. It can be aggressive or it can be defensive. It's incredibly hard to overcome and the overall card quality is insane. And the Innkeeper games where you draw a ton of cards from your one mana play are just absolutely nuts. So this part you know. Let's focus on what's different. Different. This deck tries to end the game, and that's always the thing that the adventure deck is looking to do. Like, how does the thing that sets adventure decks different apart from each other is how are they trying to end the game? Are they trying to take all the turns with all run epiphany? Are they trying to cast Genesis Ultimatum and Terror of the Peaks? Are they trying to attack with Goldspan Dragon? This deck's end game combo is Coma the Cosmos Serpent being snuck into play by Luca Coppercoat Outcast. But wait a minute. There are creatures in this deck, CGB. How does the, the how do you know the Luca will hit the coma? Well, let's read the text. Exile target creature you control. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. That's just like Transmogrify. But then here's a special line with higher converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield. The rest on the bottom in a random order. So this deck, aside from coma, maxes out at three. Three mana, Brazen Borrower. Three mana, Bone Crusher Giant. 3 mana, Love Struck Beast. 3 mana, Lanor Visionary. If you activate it by tapping the creatures, Chariot is a 4 mana card, but you won't hit it because when it's in your deck, it's not a creature. So if you target any of these creatures with your Luka Coppercoat Outcast ability, you will get a coma. That is for sure. That's pretty sweet. And the Coma Endgame, as we saw when we ran the Jeskai Transmogrify deck, is all about tapping the opponent's lands down so that they don't get to go off with their big spells and abilities so that you can end the game from there. Coma is a very powerful card, and it's interesting to see the adventure card run it. It's also interesting because they can just cast it. It's not weird for the adventure deck to get to seven mana and straight up cast Coma, which might make it a better shell than the Jeskai version. The other cards that are different in this build, the Asika's Chariot and the Lanor Visionary. Lanor Visionary is sweet because if you play it on turn three and they don't kill it, turn four you can tap it for mana along with four lands, play Luka Coppercoat Outcast minus two, turn this into a coma. Turn four coma, just like the Transmogrify build. Asika's Chariot's pretty good because it applies a variety of pressure that actually plays around sweepers to some extent. If you play the Chariot and they play Shadow's Verdict, you still have a Chariot, and then if you next turn, say, make a 1-1 and cast the 5-5 from Lovestruck Beast and crew it, you make a copy of your 1-1 and you're getting in for 4 damage. So it's kind of a faceless haven in that way. Then the other cards that you don't see every day, Fire Prophecy, it's a good removal spell because we can hide the coma on the bottom of our library by just putting a card in our hand off out of our hand and onto the bottom and then we can transmogrify it later and then we have two copies of negate to protect coma because coma is good at many things when you sacrifice a serpent to make coma indestructible it prevents a lot of shenanigans but not all of them brazen borrower is a particularly annoying one exile cards extinction event uh, these are the things that can still hit your coma so sometimes setting up negate is crucial there's 26 land as well as two shatter skull smashing so 28 total land equivalents to make sure that you hit all your land drops. So this deck is probably a lot of the same team or stuff early, but then a spicy little serpentine end mid. And let's see if we like it more than the Obosh adventure deck I featured a little while ago that LSV played in the tournament and that uh, makes up so much of the metagame right now. Today's video is dedicated to Sean Stevens. Sean, thank you very much for hitting the join button below and becoming a Cool Kids Club member. You get access to my deck list a day early through the special Discord channel. You also get a chance to get your video dedicated to you and a cosmetic purchase in your honor, as well as bonus content and early access content on the channel as well. So today's cosmetic, we are going to grab... There's a good doggy in the store. 
I, I look, I always kind of take a peek. And I'm going to get Isamaru. I haven't played Isamaru yet, but I've got an Isamaru Brawl deck I'm working on a little. And in Historic, a 1-mana 2-2 two -two Legendary Dog. I have fond memories of this card from its time a long time ago in Legendary uh, Kamigawa Standard. So I'll go ahead and pick up Isamaru. And this one's for Sean. Thank you. Let's dive in. Let the Coma Adventure begin. On the play with double innkeeper, no adventures, two chariots instead, but we'll give it a try. We will give it a try. And I think we're gonna lead with like Triome into Triome because we really wanna draw a three drop adventure creature. Or with Temple of Silence, what's this off meta nonsense? That's something you don't see every day. At least our mana will be good from double Triome. Negate. Okay, I'm ready for my adventure creature. We can draw one. The opponent kept a hand on the draw that did nothing for two turns. They must have a pretty good three mana play. And they say go. Well, there's our card. There's our card that draws cards. Let's take those cards. Our opponent might have the card Extinction Event, which can kill all of our creatures, but I'll take that chance. We have Chariots for good follow-ups. If the opponent has Omen here, that would also be sad, but they don't. They've got something, though. What's it going to be? Soul Shatter kills the Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, that probably means they don't have a way to kill all the creatures in one spell. Oh, never mind. So Shatter kills the giant, Spiteful kills the innkeepers. If I play this, I better do this first. I was gonna say, we could just run out the Luka and plus it. <laughs> now we have the chariot with two 1-1 one -one cats. It's pretty weak. Okay, the lantern. Target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent. So I will sacrifice... No, we'll just lose three. We're still at 20. We have a little bit of time before this is scary. All right, guys. Do we Luka out of coma here? I think we play the Luka. If, if the opponent deals with the coma, we can't negate it. But we can the following turn if we draw one more land, or if the Luka is still in play. So I think that makes it worth it. Actually, that's not going to hit a coma, is it? It's going to hit something else. I forgot how that worked, didn't I? Yes, I did. I have to hit a three drop. Hitting a token won't do it. And we can't activate the chariot because of the minus one, minus one. We could have gotten lucky and hit coma, but it's not guaranteed. Oh no. Oh no. We're getting absolutely dunked on. I have been betrayed. Worst game ever. All right, kill you. Put away this land. Draw Triome. Okay. New Chariot. Keep old one. Make two cats. Power up Chariot. Slam. Make a cat. What you got? Three Triomes ready to top deck the coma. All right, Terra Grid. So now if we sacrifice anything, the opponent gets control of it. So I'm going to keep losing life for the foreseeable. Oh, that's a draw. So we can target the Chariot. All right. They call me a because they Can't attack first. Terra Grid will block it. And we have Negate open. So hopefully the opponent doesn't make me sacrifice this somehow. That would be sad. They keep going at me with the lantern. 
how low can we go? I think we can lose another three here. Now, it might not be done yet, but we're close. You want to rumble? Attack with menace. Interesting. So the opponent's going to try to sweep the board, but we have negate. So a block? What you got? Terrigrid goes down. Opponent goes for blood on the snow, I'm guessing, because it gets their Terrigrid back. Extinction event. So they could hit the coma here. We could let them have it. We can turn any three drop into another coma, but I don't think that's worth it. I think the right play is definitely to negate here. We've been hoping for this. We've set this up. It's time to finish this. Especially after they threw away their tear grid. Little miscalculation by the opponent. They expected that extinction event to resolve. So unlike the usual Luka deaths, the plus on Luka here is actually really good. But we can also turn a token into another three drop. So for example, we can go Heart's Desire. We can minus onto the token. And we'll get something else. Like, voila, Love Struck Beast. Pretty cool. We've talked a lot about how good the beast is. It's very good. All right, let's act on a token. Nothing to tap, so just sacrifice this. Down to three. All right, do we play out the rest of our stuff? If the opponent somehow clears the board from here, we're going to be really sad. So I think we hold it back. Because they definitely could go for Blood in the Snow, but Coma would it, Coma would just survive and kill them. So Blood in the Snow won't do it. If it's another extinction event and they name Odd, these do it. So I think they're dead. Besides, we might draw a negate. All right. We'll hold this in hand. We'd prefer to discard it. I think we might actually go with a Stone Rain effect here from one of the Serpents as well. If we tap the opponent's permanent, they might have trouble casting something that they really want to cast. Claim to dust on the prophecy. That just draws a card, no big deal. I like keeping one serpent to make coma indestructible. We'll show the opponent that we slow rolled the land. And that's game. Well, we're on the draw. Seventh out of eighth time today. But the hand is good. So let's get right to it. Um, how do we make sure that we have a Love Struck Beast? I guess playing the tap lands will do that, right? We want to. If we draw a land next turn, we can hold off on passage, but the tap land's a good start. Okay. Now I'm not so sure. Let's gamble. Besides, the opponent might kill the innkeeper anyway, and we want another turn. The Triome indicates traditional Sultai here. Let's run out the Visionary instead of the Lovestruck Beast. Now we can play Innkeeper and Beast on a future turn to draw cards. Ch 
Chariot. Chariot can be a good source of pressure against them. But this is an ultimatum deck, probably. That's scary. Hmm. Maybe we do run out the Chariot and attack. Chariot survives a sweeper. We can crew it up to keep the damage coming. Go get blue. Hope there's no negate. Nice. So we have a board. We have uh, something that won't get swept. The opponent's drawing like a maniac here off the tome. Like, they seem pretty desperate. They're under a lot of damage pressure, and they haven't ramped yet, so there's still a few turns from an ultimatum. All right. So we're expecting interaction here. How do we play against it? Do we go for the beast? I think we do because we get a card from this innkeeper. Let's also play this land first in case we need to sacrifice it to pay for a Jwari disruption. Another beast. Power up. See if they have removal for the chariot here or not. Doesn't look like it. Oh, they're making a play. What do you think they're up to? Down to five. So, we could fetch a green, but I think I want this to be blue, and I don't think I want to expose this Lovestruck Beast. I have a feeling they have a sweeper here or they lose anyway. So, verdict this turn. Kills all our creatures. We get in with the chariot. Next turn, if they ultimate him, we have to finish the job with the bone crushers. So we can't let them gain life. It's also nice to have Brazen Borrower open. I said I wanted another blue. We could just make it now. Down to five. Five is not four, though. Five is not four. Here comes the ultimatum. Let's see how this goes. We can let them sweep the board if they pick a Shadow's Verdict. We can still beat that. We can play Giant, Crew Up, and Stomp Face. We can also bounce a blocker if they leave something in the way. What we don't want them to have, for sure is we don't want them to have the Epiphany and have another car, another turn. So that goes back in the deck. The Valky can exile the Chariot, though, so we need them to stack this wrong. They did not stack it wrong. That's too bad. So we need to find one damage, guys. If we can do that, we'll be okay. So guys, do we stomp the Tibble? Doesn't really accomplish anything. I think we just head upstairs. sneak in for this damage. No life gain. Coma? Oh man, what if they play the coma? Oh, I bounce it to my hand? <laughs> Could be hype. How come they draw the coma? So rude. So rude. Another emergent ultimatum. Okay. 
So we can't let them have the extra turn. That's for sure. They can have anything else. 3-1 over the top. Are we going to beat two ultimatums? We have a chance. If they have a mystical dispute as their blue, as their one blue source, though. Oh, man. All right. Can't let you have this. Cure best to see you got. Extinction event. Yep. All right. Please don't have mystical dispute. Please don't have mystical dispute. Please don't have mystical dispute. Oh, got him! Yes! Beat two ultimatums. Let's go! On the draw? What else is new? Prophecy can put away the coma. So it's reactive. We like reactive hands on the draw. You really want to have your removal spells to answer the opponent's threats. So this is our green source. These are probably both blue. Okay, the opponent with no action there. Are we playing the same deck? What are you playing? Okay. So they probably have a Bone Crusher Giant, is what a pause like that tells me, with no permanence on the battlefield. They have something that can target my face, but they choose not to play it. And here comes the Giant, which is good. Now, do we put away the Coma on the draw with a ton of land in our hand? Maybe we just keep what we have. We do need another green, but I think we can decline here safely. So we could play Tempo Giant, but they might have um, a Seeker's Chariot. So we want to leave Negate open. Plus, there's probably something to stomp on at some point. They might have Lanor Visionary, which is a really good stomp target out of their deck. Our deck. Man, only in Arena do you find the mirror immediately. Like, I, I think I've played against this deck once in three weeks. Wow, playing around the gate. It's interesting. So am I going to hold this giant or cast it? I'm going to hold it, so we'll say go. They're not going to get me to run my giant into a wall. Bouncing the giant is very painful. Might be the play, though. We'll see. Probably just want to take this hit and then play my giant on their turn with five mana so I can negate something. Okay. Counter. Let's just not have a beast at all. So play something else I can stomp, please. That works. Opponent is falling into my clutches, although ooze is not something I usually see here. What do they have for one red? Spike field? Maybe. The other green for coma, looking nice. Giant versus giant, but mine's pretty. The ultimate assertion of dominance. Doesn't mean we have to respect their cards any less, though. So we haven't seen any blue from them yet. Definitely happy trading on the draw. With a coma in our hand. Granted. Okay, we're going to negate that. Probably going to run out this borrower to draw a card, but there's no reason. 
I guess we could have drawn a tap land, that would be a reason, but we'll wait. Let the opponent target this. I'm sure they have something for it. Zandu Valley, huh? Okay. Kaka. Draw. It is a tap land punished. We could have had a coma this turn. Oh no. All right. Anything that says we shouldn't attack, I don't think so. They have their own borrower for a block. Yep, if I had Brazen Borrowed in my main phase last turn and not played the forest, we could have had a coma this turn. Something to remember for next time. Happy to play out the innkeepers here. I want my opponent concerned with killing them. They have dragon. Dragon's obnoxious. Do they have all runs of Epiphany? I guess it won't beat Coma if they do. So, the end game is unlocked. The opponent has a Henge. And they've got mana, but they've only got one card left. So tap your dragon. No mana from that. Could have also saved the 3-3, three, three, but still not lethal. Chariot. And Visionary. Let's see what we draw off the Visionary first, I think. I'll probably play Chariot, but it's nice to make sure. So I don't think their deck has anything to destroy a coma anyway. So we want to probably tap their Henge in their upkeep. Just deny them some mana. What is your last card? I don't think it's a land, because this is the most recent land. And they didn't play one last turn. So what are you? Something they couldn't cast. Another dragon makes sense, doesn't it? Another dragon definitely makes sense. All right, we should save the serpents to tap down dragons, not tap the henge. Okay, it's a triome. Does that change my play? I don't think so. All right, Stone Rain. <laughs> Makes two mana. They still draw a card uh, if they play creatures. This is a battle of the team of the teamer adventure endgames. Their endgame is Goldspan Dragon and probably and Great Henge and probably All Runs Epiphany for extra turns. Or maybe it's not. Maybe they just trust Fay of Wishes. Our endgame is Coma. We didn't cheat Coma into play this game. In fact, we didn't ramp at all. We just had to get to it naturally. But the fact that we might still win, showcasing the power of the card. All right, they found Brazen Borrower to bounce Coma, but we can replay Coma. We'll just be short a Serpent, and we won't be able to deliver lethal. The more turns the opponent has the Henge, the better off they will be. giant do we replay the coma when we could bone crush and draw a bunch of cards are we just gonna lose to the dragon if we don't let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve wait they're dead right i think they're dead uh negate would beat us if they can counter the giant 
All right, two points. Brazen Borrower can't block. None, none of our stuff flies. So two points from the giant. Cast the giant. Nice to see another Bone Crusher and a Borrower, even if we don't need them. Through the chariot. Another Brazen Borrower is another way they could be alive here. But let's make them have it. Cycle another Triome. That won't save them. Good game. Emotes! Give them some love. Woo! Close one. Close. On the draw, Innkeeper, Lovestruck Beast. We hope that we draw the right mana and that it works out. The coma in the opener is pretty rough. Especially when you also have the Luka. If you never drew the Luka, you wouldn't be so mad. All right, Beastie, let's go to work. Our opponent opens with an island. What could it mean? Blue, white. Skycat Sovereign. Flyers? Oh man, what's our flyer matchup like? We don't have any interaction in our hand. That doesn't seem good. You want to block? Damn, being on the draw with no interaction against a deck that's all evasive creatures, that sounds terrible. That sounds like a death sentence. But maybe Innkeeper and Beast can put them on the defensive. This is a 3-mana 5-5. Five, five. Their deck doesn't have anything of those stats. Okay, they don't play another flyer first. Curious. What are they doing? They're mutating a Sea Dasher Octopus onto it so they get to draw cards. Clever girl. I'd normally be insanely jealous, but I also have a way to draw cards, and its name is Edgewall Innkeeper. But we could also play the Visionary and threaten to coma them next turn. Ooh, what's better? This race is harder. If the opponent plays a deck with a bunch of counter spells, we really want to get under it. So I think playing the beast is essential because they could just sit back on counter spells for the rest of the game and just drawing two cards a turn and they would race us. So if you expect a counter, you don't want to sign up to make a five mana play on turn four because it blows out your whole game plan. Oh, staggering insight. Oh, they are protecting the queen. All right. Four, four, lifelink, draw two cards when it hits. We're just, we're just dead. If we don't draw something, this isn't enough. My goodness. So this is another red, which we may need. Just no interaction, and we're getting absolutely clowned for it. We can't race this, it's too much power. We need the coma next turn, and if we don't have it, we lose. So if they do have a counter spell in like the top 15 cards of their deck, and they counter this, it's over. It's absolutely over. I mean, this is, this is a very nice draw. <laughs> Staggering insight on a flyer is very nice. But they also lucked out. We drew zero Bone Crusher Giants, zero Brazen Borrowers. All right, just tap out, Put, play a bunch of stuff. Come on, help me, help me. I can't win if you don't make some plays here. There's a play. I needed more than that, though. I needed a lot more than that. I needed a lot more than that. There's no chance, is there? If we take three, we take five in the air. Even Coma tapping this down doesn't help. There's no chance. No chance, that's what we've got.
I guess I can try to draw a land and a Brazen Borrower, but even then, they just counter it and win. Like, game. I guess we can see what they... I guess we'll let them show us the counter. But even then, we lose. Too easy, man. Too easy. Obliterated. You know, as bad as that game was, I think we win on the play. Because they just have a hard time putting everything together. It's too slow. We go first. Our hand is really bad, though. Not the best hand. But mulliganing on the play is so much worse. It's so much worse. And this is potentially a turn four coma. Just the Luka visionary combo is there. If the opponent doesn't interact with it. All right. The opponent is... Yeah. They are on the adventure deck too. How does this keep happening? I never play against this deck until I play this deck. And now here it is twice. They have miscast? Dear Lord. Okay. Well, they're off to the races. The good news is if they don't remove this and they tap out for that Love Struck Beast next turn, they get comad. The bad news is if they have a Brazen Borrower, we probably lose. Okay, Mammoth it is. Let's do the thing. Do they have the Borrower? If they do, they do it now. Now is the time. Before I get the Serpent to tap. Now's the time. Resolve. Okay. Interesting. All right, do we want to tap their island? That way, they might not even be able to play a Great Henge if they have it. Their only way to deal with this is to bounce it. Like, they're not going to kill it. All right, Stone Rain effect. If they have a Fabled Passage, we lose the Luka. And it looks really bad. But, oh, they, they are not having that. They are having none of that. <laughs> All right, then. Matchmaker's being so weird today. Hasn't given me mono white. Just keeps giving me more and more adventure decks. No mono red. Days like this, I feel like I don't know what the meta is at all. Okay, we need to draw a land to inform what the heck we place this on. But we get two draws at that. And if we draw a red right away, or a green, we get to do Lovestruck Beast. Blue, black. Rogues? So what should we make available this turn? The Brazen Borrower can bounce a Thought Thief, which is what we're most worried about, but Bone Crusher Giant can stomp the 1-1. One, one. What do you think they have? They played this on turn one, right? They played this? And then they played this. That tells me that they don't have a Thieves Guild Enforcer, and they might have a Thought Thief. So we'll play the blue. Okay, does not block. They have their own borrower. All right. Interesting. And a tap land. So, we can go for the Visionary. 
we might draw an innkeeper, which would make the beast better. And the Luka could happen next turn if they tap out. And if they kill this, we get a card. So it's not that bad of an exchange either. Man, Visionary actually looks pretty good in this deck. It may die to Bone Crusher Giant, but at least it gets you a card. Okay, the opponent makes no plays. We're probably trying to get to Coma the traditional way. So how do we... How do we play around what the opponent will do here? What do they want? I feel like if we go for this, they counter it. I feel if we have two creatures out, they'll sweep the board, but then they're tapped out and we can play a Luka, which might draw some cards. So I guess that's what we want most. And if we want to draw, then we should probably play the other Visionary. Or if we know this is going to die, if we expect it to die, we should play the other Visionary because it replaces itself. And if they don't kill it, we cast Coma. See, I think we play this and fetch red, and then we Bone Crush Stomp their face, which is a little safer than attacking if they have a Shark Typhoon. Okay. Do this before they untap. It also means they're not going to play Extinction Event, because it would kill their own borrower. They could play Shadow's Verdict, but that would also kill their own borrower. So odds are, these will untap, and if they untap, we get Tacoma. If we get Tacoma, they have to have the right removal, or it's going to take over the game. The thing is, I feel like they do have it. The fact that they're just not doing anything, it's very alarming. Makes me think that we should keep, that we should try to pressure them. They can't take a bunch of damage forever. And once they play some of their spells, maybe they'll be more susceptible to coma, or maybe we'll draw a negate. But yeah, let's start hurting them and see how they respond. And not play into their counter magic. This way we can just braze and borrow them. If they do anything cool. If they make a shark here, we can fire prophecy it. Okay. It is the right land for Coma, if this were to die, but at this point, I just don't think they're ready to deal with these, so we'll see what happens. That could be a mistake, but we still have Luka. Also Chariot, very hard to deal with. They say go. Alright. Let's send a 3-1. Now we're attacking for 7. And if they tap out to make a shark, we Luka. Or Chariot. We could also play this pre-combat so they can't make a shark, unless this resolves. And then we could always just not attack with these. I guess that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Nah, the Luka coma line is probably even better, right? Because if they have a shark, let's see, that's left over. This enters the battlefield. We really don't want the Luka to get attacked then, though. Probably better for the Chariot. Also playing at pre-combat, these are still untapped. Plays around Mystical Dispute, which would make us pay three. I know, you guys want me to just slam the coma. I'm trying to save it for the right moment. Because I, this is a control deck. They have answers. It's not as simple as play coma win. They probably don't have an extinction event, but even a Heartless Act does the job. All right, didn't say please, that's a counter. Attack for seven, it's a lot of damage. Yep, 
Drown in the lock, okay. So they are something close to rogues? Rogue hybrid, I suppose? They might still have Xerath, which is something to keep an eye out for. Could steal Coma. Okay, they're tapping out. There are enough cards down here to actually kill a coma with a drown in the lock. That's that's disturbing. That is disturbing. So how do we play it? I think we attack with these and cast the coma. They'll probably take the damage because they're afraid. If they play a removal spell here, it makes the coma even better. Thieves Guild? Okay. That's okay. So they're going to block up some of the damage. All right. So here we could slam the coma, but we want to do that when they have counter magic up. So what we're going to do is slam the Luka, because right now they probably can't interact with it. If they have a second Thieves Guild Enforcer, that's bad for us. And it is possible. But we would have a 3-3 from the coma. They'd have to jump through a lot of hoops to get rid of this. It does help mill us faster, which can be a problem. It could be a problem if they mill us too fast. Oh, wait. We didn't... Oh, yeah, I did check. I did check for other coma. It wasn't there. So the trick here is that the first coma is going to leave a serpent, and the second coma is going to have it around. So even if they have two straight drown in the locks, we're going to have indestructibility as long as we hang on to this this serpent that gets created. Bounce. Okay. That works. Doesn't improve their position by much. I forgot to put a stop for the bluff factor. Yeah, now we're now we're in full blown like we're rogues without Luris, right? So Xerath San is something to watch out for. Crippling Fear is a card that's an interesting way to clean up the coils and leave Coma all alone and unprotected. All right, so we can turn the coil into something else, but we don't really want to. Let's plus the Luka for more options. Draw some cards. Drew Brazen Borrower. Nice. So we could attack. I don't really want to risk it if we run this into an Enforcer. Well, they didn't have it last turn. They would have had to just draw it. Plus we have the Borrower. Yeah, I think it's okay to attack. What could they do? They could flash out Xerath. We could bounce it then we wouldn't play a coma this turn. So it's better to play coma. It's better to just play the coma because then we can tap down the Xerath, I guess. Maybe it's just better not to attack with this. Yeah, you gotta think about Xerath. Xerath 4-4 four, four. could sneak up, ninja block this. Cause us all kinds of trouble. Are you going to brazen the coma again? That would be really bad for us. Okay, we're shark typhoon cycling for zero. Just just looking for a good card. Just looking for a coma solution. I'd love to see a Shark Typhoon try to race a coma. The opponent says, nope, we're just gonna put this Typhoon away, probably because they see the Borrower. The opponent can attack the Luka, that doesn't bother me. They're probably just dead here, being at seven. Attack space. 
guys, we shouldn't have let that happen. <laughs> guys, that was a mistake. Because we can't stop the Xerath now. We should have just tapped the Raisin Bar. I didn't even think about it. But what are they going to do? They get Chariot? They get Luka? And we get to bounce it with our own Borrower? This isn't that bad. It's painful, but it's not that bad. It's more about my pride. My pride is damaged. You know, I talked about Xerath this whole video and then didn't play around it on the crucial turn. Okay, so they get a 2-2 that draws a card. We can just bounce it. it. can come back to our hand. And they got their Borrower back so they can bounce Coma. But they're not going to do it. Okay. They've decided the writing is on the wall. And we are back for the post-game wrap. And I... I think I did a good job managing Salt today because I had a really bad start to the day. I, I didn't win any games for like my first hour of playing and it seemed like everybody had everything. But uh, we pulled through, we toughed it out, and once we started getting into some competitive back and forth interesting games, the deck was really fun. The sort of looming end game of Coma out of nowhere that some decks can't deal with adds another dimension to the deck entirely. And so does Negate. Just playing Negate or some kind of counters in these adventure shells seems to change a lot of how the deck functions. So I think I'm going to explore Teamer a little more with more counter spells because I find that take on the deck interesting. The Coma Luka endgame is one way to go. I don't know if it's the best. It's certainly most, I think it's the most fun. It's very flashy. People love the giant snake, myself included. But maybe there's another way to do it, like place a good counterspell here and then untap in Genesis Ultimatum. But the end game is the thing that's still up for grabs in the Teamer Adventure Shell, so we might explore it some more in the future. In the meantime, I think this deck is a little better than Obosh Adventures. I liked that deck. But for best of one, I think that there are so many decks that have a hard time with Coma that the Coma endgame is better. In best of three, the Teamer Adventure Obosh list is probably a little better, but I'm not 100% sure. This one I like a lot better for the type of magic I play. So if you were to craft this deck and play this deck, I do think you'd hit Mythic this season. There are uh, about a week, I know about a little more than a week, week and a half before Strixhaven releases. So. Uh, when that happens, everything might change, but I will tell you this from what I've seen of Strixhaven. An Edgewall Innkeeper, Brazen Borrower, Bonecrusher Giant, Lovestruck Beast deck is probably still good. And this one has the end game that, in my opinion, is the most kaiju. So this is my style of, uh, my style of deck. So, I hope you try it. Hope you like it. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the subscribe button, consider leaving a like, consider leaving a comment, hit the bell if you want the notifications, and as always, I will see you in the next video. You're cool.